Uh, welcome to SO36 Berlin, where I have a band called Clowns with me. First of all, welcome to Berlin, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, for the beginning, could you tell us what and who is band called Clowns? Um, Clowns are a band that's formed seven years ago in Melbourne, Australia. Um, we have released three albums now on a label called Poison City Records in Australia and This Charming Man Records in Europe. This is our fourth European tour and we're having a really good time and it's great. Okay, so uh, you come from Melbourne's Bayside. How important are those roots for your band? Rules, did you say? Roots. Roots. Yeah. Um, well, they're not really that important. It's just kind of the place where we grew up and um, obviously had our formative years in the band. But since then, we've all moved out of the Bayside suburbs and moved closer to the city. I mean, for the last couple of years, it's felt like that we haven't really had a home. We've Our home has basically been our tour van. Um, but, you know, it's... It is important in the way that we, we grew up there and we do like to return to the South Side and play some gigs, which gets neglected in the live music department. Um, but, you know, in terms of it being something overly substantial to us, it's it's just where we come from. You know, it's not, it's not anything that we own very proudly or deny. Okay, and how did the band come together originally? Steve and I went to high school together and when we finished school, we both decided to take a, a year off studying, like take, take a gap here and just play music. Um, I think when we finished that first gap year, we were like stupid enough to like still not go to uni and just keep playing shows every weekend and having a good time. And then I guess like we just saw progression with it over the time. And here we are seven years later, still doing the same thing. And it's really fun, having a great time doing it. Okay, uh, seems like you guys tour like crazy. What are the best parts and the worst parts of touring life for you? Uh, well, I guess the best part is basically the autonomy of it all. Um, we're not really assigned to a label or a booking agency that forces us to, to do anything. We, uh, we get offered shows and we basically do probably 99% of the shows that we get offered. Um, the worst part is probably our guitarist Jared's smelly armpits because he doesn't shower for days on end and it can be pretty disturbing for the rest of us. But um, but in terms of bad things, you know, I, I don't like to really, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like to complain too much. I mean, it comes with its highs and its lows, but it's a choice that we make and it's and it's something that we're that we're totally stoked on. And what makes a good gig for you guys? Good vibes, lots of good energy and like crowd participation, singing, dancing, smoke machines, lights. I don't know, party. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Our show, we, we've done everything from playing, uh, you know, punk squats in Berlin to, to big open air festivals and a... And a good show can never really be defined by, you know, fancy lights or a good sound system. It's, it's definitely the vibe of the people in the room. You know, we could play to 20 people who, who love it and that's better than 20,000 people who hate it and are waiting for the killers to play or, or something, you know, if we're playing some major festival. Okay, talking about ups and downs, we know that uh, at one point you won some serious cast in a million dollar minute quiz show. <laughs> And then again, you got in the middle of a social media shitstorm when the crazy clown started uh, harassing people over the globe. Mm -hmm. Care to share some other crazy stories along the road? Nothing comes to mind? Well, one time, our guitarist Jared's armpits were so bad <laughs> that we had to put him on the roof, like tie him to the roof racks, because he just smells so bad all the time. Um, what else has Jared done? <laughs> Jared, we can we could talk for hours about what Jared's done. He doesn't know that he's out of the band yet. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think my my go to crazy tour story uh, in in an interview setting because there's definitely a lot that I wouldn't like to share over an interview setting. But my my favorite one is a time when we played in Brisbane 
over Australia Day, which is a horrible, uh, horrible holiday, which happens in Australia. Let's not go into the politics of that. Um, but we got given a hotel room for the first time by the by the crowbar in Brisbane, and they they got us so wasted that night. We went back to the hotel, and there was this. Uh, the way that the hotel was laid out is there was the beds and then there was the bathroom and then there was the door out into the into the hotel laneway and I I got up and I just I needed to throw up basically and I needed to piss really bad as well Um, and we're all just KO'd in the hotel room and in my drunken state I walked over and I accidentally walked out of the hotel room into the into the alleyway where all the other doors were um and then I, I realized only as the door shut and I couldn't get back in because you needed a key to get back into the hotel room. So I was banging on the door really hard, but the rest of the band is just KO'd, basically. And you were naked, weren't you? Yeah, I, I, yeah that's, a, that's a pretty crucial part of the story too. I was, good, I was only in my underwear staying in the, in the Novotel in, <laughs> in, um, in, in Tenerife in Brisbane, which is quite an affluent suburb, might I add. Um, so I walk out and then you know, I'm going to throw up, I'm going to piss myself. I didn't know what to do. So I started walking, pacing up and down the alleyway. And then I realized that on level seven, there was a gym uh, and there was like a public toilet area. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm going straight there. So I went into the, into the staircase and ran all the way up from level two to level seven, only to realize that you also needed the same key card to get onto level seven. So basically I found myself naked and trapped in the stairwell of the Novotel, um, with, <laughs> with security cameras. And, uh, and I just had no choice but to throw up and piss all over the staircase um, in front of the CCTV camera. <laughs> and then, oh, fuck, I don't even know why I started telling this, but I'll continue. And then, so I had nothing to do, so I ended up walking up all the staircases until one of the doors was finally open. Um, and then I just lied down on a couch like this until about six in the morning when families started getting up to go do holiday activities and people in business suits were walking out <laughs> of their rooms and just looking at this this you know 20 year old dude who was in his underwear had vomit all over him um and then eventually the security got called and i explained the situation and then they let me back in and then we never got sent a bill or anything so yeah it was a it was a happy ending for all (laughs) okay can't we can't make a segue from that but uh your new album uh lucid again came out only a couple of months ago how would you describe it in your own words um, it's definitely new territory for us. It's a little bit. We definitely tried a lot of new things. Um, a lot of the songs are a bit longer than previous hardcore sort of sounding songs we've done. We explored different guitar effects and vocal techniques, drum sounds. Just the whole thing was kind of a bit of an experiment. We didn't even know if our own fans would like it. We just wrote the album that we wanted to do. And I feel like probably every album we write from now on will probably have some form of like new um, element to it because we enjoy exploring new ideas and stuff. Um, I think I think it's a I think it's a record that we're all really proud of and really happy about it. So yeah, yeah. I read uh, before this album came out that you wanted to take a more melodic direction with this album. Uh what kind of directions do you think you will take with the future albums? What kind of uh, things are you going to explore? Basically, now that we're coming up to our fourth record, we have decided that every record we're going to be um, exploring new themes. Uh, so, I mean, on our last record, as we just said, we, we explored a bit more of a psychedelic sort of jammy sound. Um, the next record we're discussing going in a bit more of a disco direction. So, Nile Rogers and Sheik. Um, and after that, who knows, maybe a yeah, experimental avant-garde jazz uh, kind of sound. Okay, and uh, your stay here in Berlin will be a short one, but do you have any special plans? <laughs> That's a great plan. <laughs> and uh, you already talked about the musical direction about the ba- of the band. Uh, but overall, how does the band's future look right now? Uh, where do you see yourself in like a couple of years? 
Anything else? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I suggest uh, champagne with that. <laughs> but thank you guys very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you.